was all these different ingredients that you have in explosives. Mm -hmm. There was a very common ingredient, which I think was potassium chlorate or sodium chlorate. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a bunch of other stuff mixed in with that, but you could smell that one thing. So it's no different than like, say, people, you know, like hiding drugs in coffee grounds or something. Dog's still going to sort through that and find the drugs. All right. What is up, everybody? Uh, I got bit by a dog today. <laughs> <laughs> Intentionally. First thing. A couple of times. I had a couple cup. I had a couple cup of, cups of uh, coffee beforehand, so I was totally prepared as I walked in and, and at 8 a.m. got bit by a dog. A uh, little background here, though. Jim to my right. We have Garrett Hottenstein across from us, and we're going to talk today about military working dogs which Mr. Garrett is quite familiar with. That was your job. Correct. A very cool job. <laughs> yeah. A very cool dog. Ido and I, we're still cool. We're mm-hmm. still cool. He was just doing his job. Oh, yeah. He was just doing his job. So uh, that's what we're going to talk today, about military working dogs. Yeah. Ido's actually present. The panting in the background, if anybody can pick that up, <laughs> is not me <laughs> or Garrett. <laughs> this time. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, not this time. Uh, that is that is Ido, but that's what we'll be chatting about a little bit. But uh, so Garrett, I mean, uh, to, f- for starters, I mean, like maybe tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of, um, you know, what you did in the military, your role mm-hmm. there, how you ended up there, just just some background, because like even when we're pre-podcasting, which we always do, <laughs> uh, it's like all this like really cool, fascinating stuff comes out, and it just leads to other things, other things, and eventually we have to just start recording. Right. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's open with that. So yeah, uh, I mean, straight out of high school, actually wanted to join the army or the entire time I wanted to join the army. Um, and my dad was a dog handler or still is. Uh, and I wanted to do that, but I was told you couldn't. So I was like, okay, well a drone operator sounds good. So I was ready to like enlist as a drone operator. Hmm. And the next thing you know, they're like, well, that's not available. What about dog handler? I was like, I was told you couldn't do that. Absolutely. That's actually how I got the job. Like, was it, were you told you couldn't do that because, like, straight out of high school, you need to be, like, a little older and more experienced? No, or just, like, just that, that was kind of a thing they weren't doing very much? Or? Yeah, I think it hadn't gotten to the recruiters yet that you couldn't enlist as it. Because, hmm. like, so, back years ago, before I was in, you actually couldn't. They The way it was is that you had to be an MP, a 31 Bravo is what the uh, MOS is. And then from there... You'd be, you know, take the top of your, the best people or whatever. So I was told. I mean, maybe they took the, the people they wanted to get rid of. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how it worked per se. That's how, that's how I got selected to go up first with the... Uh, <laughs> right. The, yeah. yeah, exactly. No, no, no. We yeah. can spare Mark. Yeah. But, um, and then from there, they would send them to dog school or handler's course is what it was. Oh, okay. And they would have a secondary identifier. It was called Zulu 6. And the bad part about that is, say they would... Um, PCS would be like move to a different duty station if they didn't have a dog handler position available they would just go back to being a regular MP oh wow yeah. so you're yeah you're not like uh, necessarily dog handler for life you could all no. of a sudden just like yep well. but so now, you're kind of like if you like didn't want to be an MP ultimately mm-hmm. you're kind of rolling the dice a little bit then like man I hope I get the yeah. dog handler gig Th- that was back then but okay. yes but now you can enlist for it okay and which is which is great for people who actually want the job, but then we still have you still have to send them through dog school and all that. And like, there's t-shirts out there too. Our first dog <laughs> is a giant ammo can that we would put a choke chain and leash on, and or choke chain collar and leash, and that was our first dog to teach us how to handle a dog, how really? to correct a dog in the correct way. Now, how what is an ammo can? How does that then directly? correlate over to one so, of these dogs it's <laughs> is, it so, sh- is it shockingly like wow they're exactly like giant ammo cans full of ammo i mean they have training dogs that we would use we're not just like taking a dog that's completely untrained and we're training them right so we have all these dogs that are there that are there to train us and they've been doing it for years um so a lot of it we're just doing the commands, like how the hand signals that we were told to, and they just automatically do it. I'm like, oh, this is easy. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but yeah. Um, but no, the the sole purpose was that is to teach us, like, you need to put the collar on this way. You need to put the choke chain on this way. And it mm-hmm. goes in that order. And you have to put the leash on. They're going to heal on your left side. It's That's just how it was set up. And we had to make sure we did that the right way. 
Because the other thing too, in handler's course, like say, of course, if you're doing something you're not supposed to, to that dog, gone, which is the right thing. Like if you're going to mess up, you're gone. Yeah. So. Well, I suppose in, sorry, Mark, uh, but I was thinking if you screw up around this ammo can, Mm -hmm. your first dog. Yeah. Then, you know, I mean like those dogs, they know when somebody is unsure of what they're doing. They Like if you don't have the confidence in in what's going on, that dog's going to pick you out immediately. <laughs> yes. And uh and yeah, your your day is probably not going to go that well and you might end up uh might end up leaving. Well, speaking of that, fast forward a little bit when I got him. I mean, we didn't really get along well at first, but the scars on my hands are from him. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, like the, these, this, I got some on my arm, I got one on my stomach. That's how all good um, friendships start. Those yeah. aren't really those aren't really small. No, no. Yeah. Um, oh. I, I do want to back up real quick though. <laughs> like when, when you're like, oh yeah, you know, I'll do the drone thing. And they're like, oh, you can't. like, did they know that you had an interest in dog handling or was that just like some ser- serendipitous thing? I think so. Thing? Yeah. I think okay. they did. Yeah. Cause I, I really don't think they would have just been like, oh, we're going to give this to you like randomly. Out, out of thin air. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't think so. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure they had, an, like, they knew I had an interest in it. And is, and did that interest develop because like your dad was already doing it? And yes, you, absolutely. You were familiar with kind uh, of like yeah. the process and like dogs and mm-hmm. wanted okay. And that's like I want to do that to begin with, but then it's told I couldn't, and then I actually got it. So that's but awesome. yeah, I absolutely want to do that because growing up, even before I was in the military, I was taking bites from my dad's dog and okay. helping train him. Was that like a law enforcement role or a yes. military role as well? Law enforcement. And he still okay. he still does it. Nice. Yeah. Do you think that helped you? Oh, absolutely, because he was a handful at first as from the bites and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, he was definitely a handful. Uh, if I didn't have the knowledge that I had prior and nothing against the, the handlers course training us too, like they did a great job. Nothing. Uh, and yeah, I don't think I would have been at all prepared for him uh-huh. yeah. because he had been through, I think four handlers before me. Really? Yes. And you were in his first rodeo. And oh they, no. And they knew like he had what it takes. He just needed like the right, like at what point are they like, you know what? Maybe he's not the right fit for the job. So, and that's the thing. So like when you get put on a dog, they're going to pay like, cause we get put on a dog, like after training and whatnot, we get to our duty station, mm-hmm. we get assigned a dog and they'll get a feel for it. Like the people, um, our trainers or like our kennel master per se, will look at us, pay attention to us, be like, okay, how are you doing with that dog? You getting a feel for them or whatever, and you're like, and oh, if, no, we're good, we're totally good. Just, <laughs> yeah. uh, just apply direct pressure. I'll yeah. put my arm over my yep. head. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, if there's dogs available, um, it will do. Maybe we'll switch around a little bit to get a good fit. Okay. okay. And if not, then you gotta suck it up and deal with it. Is um like some of those, I guess you know, growing pains. Maybe <laughs> like is that because he was still learning too like you guys are kind of learning together he was just like nope i'm kind of aggressive like he was at the time he was uh someone that didn't like to be told what to do and okay. didn't and like because we would tell them to do something and if they didn't do it we would correct him and if they still didn't do it we would for like say like to sit we would push their butt down mm-hmm. force him into the sit and he didn't really like to be forced to do things hmm. so it was it was i honestly feel like it was more so of like an initiation for of, for me mm-hmm. from him like i'm testing you and it was a constant like test oh was, yeah. yeah he's like he's like i gotta see if you're tough enough for me it, yeah and like i swear I, I think for like the first year it was like once a month there would be a time where he'd like come up leash at me and try yeah. to bite me i'm like come on like like let's just work together like yeah. after a while I'm like this got oh, so annoying <laughs> yeah what um God, there's so many things that to like this establishing things and questions that we could ask. But uh, before we go a ton further, can we also establish? So, uh, Ito is uh, a pretty common type of of dog used in dog handling with the military. Correct. Right, and he is. Yeah, he's a Belgian Malinois. Belgian Malinois. Yeah, I some think people he's... just call him Mal's and stuff Correct. like that, or Belgian Mal's, something yeah. like that. Maligators too. Right, that's <laughs> actually <laughs> fitting. I oh, like I was, that. Yeah, yeah. I like that for missiles. <laughs> Um, I've heard that one before, uh, but very, very common type of dog in this type of service oh, yes. work, right? Yeah. And why is that? So, um, so you like see a lot of German shepherds for police, right? Which are now moving towards Malinois as well. Yeah. And they still have they kind of have a mix of them, and not the military isn't all Malinois. We do have German shepherds. I've seen a, like a very few amount of Belgian Chevrons, which I didn't know what they were until I actually saw one. What? Um, it's like yeah. a 
Like a Mao kind of looks like a. It's, it's like a Mao, is... but it's like a longer coat. It's like a shaggier, longer coat. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. Because for those not familiar, and I know I'm oversimplifying in here because somebody who is a, a Mao expert will probably hate this. Uh, but they almost look like small German shepherds. So actually, and that's what I was going to get to is the difference between like a German shepherd and a Malinois. Yeah. So they stand up a lot different. Like so, uh, a German shepherd kind of has like in the hips they kind of slouch more. Yeah. Okay. They look and like, like they're, they're always creeping. Yeah, and a Malinois stands up kind of like just like and stands up straight, like ready to go. But another thing, energy wise, I was always told that say like that that aid that I had him find, if we put it up in the ceiling, a German shepherd would find it and look at it, maybe go up the wall once and then sit and be like, Hey, it's up here, I can't get to it. Whereas a Malinois, sometimes they'll just keep going up that wall until they give up. <laughs> but they'll they'll keep going up that wall. Yeah. Some of them will. And that's and that's a big difference between German Shepherds and Malinois, just the, the drive sometimes. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Does it have to do, uh, does the just the choice of the Belgian Malinois also have to do anything with, with the size of them? Because I feel like usually the Mal's I see are smaller than most German Shepherds that I see. And, like, does that make them a little bit I easier could. to, like, you know, get in a rig and, like, let's jump out of an airplane, you know, <laughs> or whatever you're going to do with them? Uh, does that have anything to do with it, too? And that very well could be because, I mean, I feel like Malinois can be faster and have a stronger bite sure. just from my experience hey you're fine and uh, i've never been bit he by knows we're talking about it <laughs> i've never been bit by a german shepherd gym but i i would concur with that statement because that pressure was um and remind like, just remember he doesn't really have teeth anymore either right and i think yeah we'll, <laughs> we'll get, get into, into that, that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah i mean even without like just that that pressure he loves the wrist area i was trying to give him the uh like my upper arm but yeah, like God. I said, he wasn't going easy on you. Well, no. They know. And, and this is like, what? That was 8 a.m. So we're 9.20 right now. An hour, 20 minutes later, like, I st- I'm still, like, red. I still have, like, a red <laughs> mark. And there's, like, still a slight depression where he just, he really just liked to. Oh, yeah. That, I'm was, glad, a, that I'm glad, was a spot. I'm glad you did that, not me. I mean, you can still do it if you want to. Oh, cool. Maybe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds good. No, that's yeah. good for you. Uh, I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Right, so but he, so him being, uh, him being a Mal, they're cool dogs. They're not, they're not for everybody. Correct, and I don't, do not recommend people getting Malinois as a pet either. <laughs> like that's these things are not, even like, even as a puppy, like they're not pets. Yeah, like they need something to do. They've have typically all Malinois have the energy and the drive to do something. Yeah, and they need something to do. So when, like, say you leave them at home, no, it's probably not a good idea. Okay. When you get a Mal as a dog handler in the military, like, you know, you arrive on your uh, post or something like that, and you're kind of working through, maybe people are switching around dogs or something like that, but they're, you know, Ito came to you at some point, even if he was through four handlers or whatever mm-hmm. it was prior to you, do, does somebody handle, like your kennel master, I, th- I know you mentioned that position, do they handle some level of training prior to then giving it to the handlers, or are the handlers, are you kind of like, hey, you came of age, and now I'm going to bring you from the ground up. Or no, they, they so, start at some base level. So we have a kennel master who basically runs the whole show. Yeah. But then we have, so then like in my at least at my base, hey, quit. At my base, we had like a plans and ops position that you know does all the plans and operations of the of the unit and plans things, of course, in the title. But then we have like NCOs, like sergeants and whatnot, that are there to train us. They're there to supervise us. That have more experience and. And it's we're all there to help each other too. So even if I am I have Ido and I have to decoy for say my buddy that has his dog, or we're helping set out explosives for each other. So I don't know where they're at all the time, or he doesn't know where they're at all the time, because obviously that makes a difference. You're not going to know where they're at in a real world situation. Mm-hmm. So we're constantly helping each other. But there is people there that are more experienced than us when we get there that help us train. Okay, got it. Like how how long is that process that you guys go through before it's like okay it's time to do time to do work like we're getting so, deployed somewhere oh so like you're talking like the training before we get deployed mm-hmm. so that is all dependent on how you are with a dog okay down we have to go through what is called certification okay and he's still looking for those toys over there oh yeah yeah he doesn't even care about mine yeah Ryan <laughs> Ryan had uh. A couple uh, dog toys for his dog, you know, because Dixie's back here a lot. Right. And he was, like, so 
Like he was, oh, be, he was he's being like, a good those boy. Those are new toys. But he I was want like those toys. so keyed up, and it was crazy too because Garrett was showing me like uh, the his ears are basically like uh, the rear dovetail on a pistol, and like perfectly lined up. Like he took a picture. <laughs> we'll post this picture. Yeah. But um, it was crazy. Like I mean, it's like he was just hyper focused on those and just like boom. But he's being a good boy. Like he wasn't like oh, yeah. going after it. Like yep. he That's wanted funny. it. That's funny. But yeah, um, training wise, it's dependent on how you are with a dog because certification that is like typically an all week thing. It can get shortened down depending on how many like your time frame of what how many training lanes we do. Which training lanes are anything from an open area like like that prairie out there Mm -hmm. someone will go out there and hide some explosives and we have to so like hunting you know how you quarter things yeah oh yeah do the exact same thing with this okay you do you quarter it off to try to find the explosive out there so that's one lane like one training lane we do we do vehicles buildings um roadways stuff like that because i mean roadways is what i mainly did on deployment Mm -hmm. okay um but yeah and that's so that's all part of that but then the other thing we do is first day of um (laughs) <laughs> certification is we do um obedience and ob uh ob course mm-hmm. and then we do uh aggression which is what obviously you experience and it goes into a lot more a lot more in depth to it like i was telling you about the standoff a little bit up upstairs or uh, um about that uh dog that would body check oh yeah uh-huh. so what we do the whole scenario of aggression is we would call someone in to talk to him like hey can i see your id and then you go back out and then we do the bite and then after that, we would do um, the search. So we would put him down in a down, we'd pat the guy down. Mm-hmm. You know, I was petting him all the dog hair. <laughs> but, uh, and then we'd pat him down, and we'd walk him back. It's called an escort. we walk him back to the patrol vehicle, is what that's supposed to represent. And then uh, we'd reset. And then we'd do the standoff, which is where we would send the dog on the person. And the guy would be like, I give up. And then we have to get the dog to stop. So, oh, okay. That's that's the whole actual like aggression thing that we would work on. Developing some it's level called, of like an on and off switch. Yes, so absolutely. Speak. Okay. And, you know, it's just called like the five phases. Yeah. Like step one through five, how to do all that. Yeah. How, like, let's say the dog is just like charging. Yes. Like, how close can the dog be, bef- like, when you like give the command to stand off, which I don't know what that command is. But, so, like, all dogs are different, but I've had some dogs that like, you like the handler can tell them that that dog did not like not bite and dog will stop and slide and hit you and not bite. Wow. Yeah. That's some, that's, that's impressive. That takes so much, that takes so much work. I mean, to be able to, and I just can't, I think about this anytime I see, you know, like a hunting dog or a, a service dog like this or something. I mean, the ability to go in and communicate with a different species and a different, you know, like no similar form of dialect, you know, or anything like that. But get them to be able to understand on such a level where they can be used as like this tool mm-hmm. right? and almost like an extension of your body and an increase of your abilities is so is so wild. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I imagine... Well, and to like just to be able to flip that switch too. Like yeah. I'm like going full tilt, like mentally, physically, this direction. Yeah. And then to stop... To, like literally, like flip a switch. Yeah, yeah. I, I can picture s- like, um, like in football, you know, you see like whatever receiver go for a ball, and then maybe they tip it, whatever, and then like you know you, the DB has to just like lay off at the last minute, but you right. still hit, like you're still running into him or whatever. Yeah. yeah. What was the story with the, so the dog that, and this was like maybe not like uh, a full stop. But you said that one dog oh. would like you would like <laughs> check check people at the oh, end. Oh yeah. So there was a dog that we used to have. He's retired now. Dog's name was Titan, and uh, without fail. Every time we would do the standoff where we would send the dog on the person and call him off. Outfield, the first time, we that dog would come up full force, run at you, jump, like leap at you, and body check you at full speed. Wouldn't bite you, but he'd body check you. Oh, yeah. Throw it's you like on I'm the gonna ground. Get, I'm going to get a lick in. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Like throw you on the ground, and he wouldn't bite you. And he just like you'd be able to call him back. He'd return to your, like, return to your side and everything. Yeah. And you'd get back up. And then after that, then he would do it. So, like, going through certification, like, say one handler was going through, before the our certification authority, the person who watches it and certifies that you're good to go, we'd have to go out to another area, let them body check someone first, and then you can go in and do it. Wow. It was funny, but it, it was a process. Yeah. That's too funny. Because in a real world, that is okay. 
the dog body checking someone because he didn't bite. He did not bite. And if there is any reason for us to send you the dog on the person in the first place, you're it's okay. I mean, you at least deserve a body check if you're that sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, but even like legally, from, though, the dog did not bite someone, so yeah. you're good. Yeah. And from That's the dog's perspective, you know, like, it's like, hey, how about a little something for the effort, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. And like, and just like, I'm just letting you know I'm here. <laughs> and I'm letting you yeah. know what could have happened. You made the right choice. What was, um, obviously you had some experience going into this um, with your dad, but like what was still something that surprised you when you were going through training where you're like, oh, I didn't think of working with a dog that way or I didn't think of the, f- the fact that the dog would think of X, Y, Z that way. I would say we had a new, we had a, a new kennel master come in and he had a whole different way of training than what I was used to. Um, when I first got there, we were very physical, like, you know, pop the choke chain, like, no, we're not doing this. Like it was very like authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the other kind of master came and he's like, hold on, let's just do this. And what it was is that all it was, was, um, you're withholding a reward. The dog, the dog wants that Kong and he didn't do what you want him to. Don't give it to him. Yeah. It just keep doing that. And then when he actually does it, then you give it to him and you love on him and like you hype him up and everything. And he's like, oh, this paints a clear picture because if you're constantly correcting a dog, or correcting a dog and it's you know causing him some physical like pain or whatever, yeah, like, oh, I don't like this. But then you just it's to me it's it's like thinking about it, it's so much clearer for the dog. Hmm. Straight path, like I mean, and is it like I guess it's to me just it seems like more like positive reinforcement. Exactly, and that's exactly what it's called. Your positive, re- like, no. positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, like because. We, oh, I forget because it's been so long. We had, um, there was like four different things, whatever it called. <laughs> I wish I could remember. But uh, but yeah, it, it's a lot to do with withholding reward or giving the reward and all that. But it's all about being positive is what this kennel master had in mind. And it worked great. Hmm. Do you still have to be even like training that way? Like, are you the alpha? It So you do have to, like it's, Yes. Yeah, I'll just put it that way. But yes, you definitely have to make sure the dog knows that who's in charge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because especially when you're in, the dog is a weapon. Mm-hmm. It is, it's basically a weapon. It can still hurt someone. And obviously in the worst case scenario, it can kill someone. But you can control it. But you have to make sure that it knows who's, you know, pack leader per se. Yeah. Right. I mean, let's like you say, like if you're carrying a rifle, like you're in charge, you're in charge of it. Yep. Yeah, like you can point it at something. Yeah, and you know, like yeah. Well, that's just such a. It's such a. I feel like there's got to be such a fine line there in that dynamic because, because like, if you go full on way overboard on like trying to be alpha and you and you basically like the Absolutely. dog now is, you know, scum or something like that, then you break some of. This confidence that they have, oh, this yes. like this drive that they have, this I'm a boss attitude that they probably have to have, you know. Like I feel like these dogs kind of have to be cocky oh, in yeah. some ways, and <laughs> yeah. you see it. And when you when you see one of these dogs, you can kind of tell. Like the dog, the dog's like, yeah, I'm I'm a boss. Oh but, yeah. So you have to like hype up that ego they have a little bit. Yeah. But also keep it in check and not let them then become the boss of you. Which is, I mean, I can't uh, that. Well, that's probably what all the work is that you're doing. Oh, and it just takes a, so so much work. Yeah, and there's a perfect example of that. And a buddy of mine, the same guy I was talking about to you about, mm-hmm. uh, he had a dog named Vasco. And he it was funny. He nicknamed him Pickies or Pickles. Yeah. So this is funny. And uh or actually it wasn't him that nicknamed it, it was another buddy of mine that nicknamed him when he was on deployment. But uh it was so funny. He would be on the bite and every time we'd say his name to get his attention, like calmly, he'd be like, Vasco. And as soon as he said that, the dog would just start screaming, like whining really hard, like loud, because he knew the next thing he was going to say is to tell him to let go. And he didn't want to come off that bite. <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, yeah, so you, The dog's like, just don't say it. Don't yeah, say it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the dog would be on the bite. He'd be like thrashing and everything. And Handler would be like, Vasco, calm, very calm. Mm-hmm. And the dog just starts like whining so loud and everything. And, and then he'd be like, out. And then he would like, again, do it a lot. And then he would let go. But it was so funny. Man. I mean, you can tell, like, when we did that exercise this morning, like, it, that is, like, what, like, he, that was his job. Like, oh, yeah. That was, and that was, like, his favorite thing in the world. And uh, Ito, I thought it was funny, like, you'd, you know, basically give the command to, like, you know, let go or whatever. Mm-hmm. But what'd you say to him? 
Out. Out. Okay. Yeah. Out. Yeah. And uh, I was probably still panicking, so I didn't hear it. <laughs> um, but he'd like he'd get a few extra licks in, you know, but not licks. Like, but like on his way out, like he was on his way. He's like, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. And he'd bite like four more times Which on his way out. Which we don't want anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely don't want that. Was that is what he has done a lot, and it was just nice to. It took a long time for him to actually get a full mouth bite before okay. he would be like right here on the edge, and it was. Granted, it's painful for the decoy too, but it's also it's a lot like for, it's good a lot better for the dog to have a full mouth bite because then they have control of the arm. Right. Yeah. Say like we send them on an actual person, that person can still like possibly break free from that. Yeah. If you got that f- full mouth around your arm, it's oh not yeah, out. yeah. Well, maybe Game like over. depending on like the level of clothing the person has, right. or um, yeah, because you're saying I'm like you want that like that deep, mm-hmm. how like does, full grab. How does one communicate to a dog in doggies? You know, <laughs> like. Hey, you're not biting enough. Like, bite more to the point where that's like consistent, and he gets it. Like, so, oh, I need to. Uh, yeah. Know. So there's actually a way to do that, and uh, we would back tie them, or have uh, we could either do um, like back tie them to like a chain link fence, and then we could have like say I could decoy for myself, like get teach him how to bite better, or I could have someone else hold and be a mobile back tie is what it is. Mm-hmm. But um, all it is is you're getting close to the dog, and you're making him want that bite even more. And then when you finally give it to him, he gets that full mouth bite because he doesn't want it to go oh, anywhere. Oh, yeah, okay. So you, and then when he actually gets that full mouth bite, you're sitting there like, good. You're telling him like he's doing a good job. Gotcha. And it's like, you just do little like sessions like that because when I was going through training, they told us you would never want to, you know, have your dog out for a long period of time. Keep your training sessions short, but always end on a good note. Mm-hmm. If you end on a bad note, that's what the dog's going to think about. That's what you're going to think about, and you're going to go back in next time. All frustrated. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, you have to keep telling yourself, too, don't get frustrated. Yeah. How long, how long were your training sessions then, like, on average? Maybe 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Okay, so, tops. yeah. Oh, yeah, that Granted, is quick. Granted, when that was just, like, obedience and aggression stuff. Like, say we're doing detection stuff, mm-hmm. and we're going on a roadway or something. I mean, I think I did a roadway before when it was, like, an hour. Mm-hmm. But that was also to test us to make sure to keep an eye on him, too. So we're also, like, trying to be aware of surroundings, trying to look for any visual markers because that's what they did on deployment, too. Like, they'll put out visual markers to mark where they put an explosive mm-hmm. because they could be way over here, and it's actually, a, like, a, like a, their sights on us walking in to blow it up. So, oh. Yep, mm-hmm. absolutely. So I, th- I don't know exactly how to explain it, but it's called Winthrop Theory. Mm-hmm. But... um. But yeah, there's uh back to the the roadway stuff. Uh, it's also for us to keep an eye on the dog. Periodically take his temperature, make sure he's not getting overheated. Mm. Um, give him a break, give him some water, let him take a break, and yeah. then then we'd push on. Okay. But yeah. What uh, I guess we haven't established this fully yet because I mean there's so many things to ask, like you <laughs> said. But um, it sounds like a dog like Edo, he's not hyper specialized. Like, cause you're talking about there's the aggression stuff and mm-hmm. the obedience stuff, but then there's detection stuff. So he he as a dog could be called upon to detect explosives, perhaps, or also maybe like attack a bad guy. Yes. Kind so of all, all those. Things. I mean, obviously not anymore. He's retired. Right. But, right. But um, we actually did. It was a really cool training scenario. We actually, and I think I've only done one, where we had a decoy, a bad guy in a building, and we were told that we're just going up to clear this compound for explosives. And this was a training scenario, which is great because it made us think. We're like, oh, things can change at any moment. Mm-hmm. So it was like, it, it stunned all of us though. We were going up, searching the roadway, searching, and then we see this guy run off. We're like, well, what do we do? Like, I didn't, I didn't know at the time. I'd never had that happen before. I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool though. It was a great training experience because exactly, things can change. Okay. And the dog then has to be able to go from like, I'm sniffing for something, the bad guy. Yes. Okay. But it's, what I have found it is very hard to go from, you can go from sniffing to bad guy. But it's very hard to go from bad guy to sniffing because <laughs> he likes to, he likes to do the like he likes to bite. Yeah, he does because it's fun to him. It's that's all it is. It's a game. It's fun. Yeah, it's, there, like, there's not a lot of dogs that are actually like aggressive. It's trained to be fun for them. Right, that's all it is. Yeah, like I mean, he took a sleeve off and you can go say hi to him. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, and then even like when it was off. Like, you could tell how much he wanted it, but he's, like, so, like, well, 
uh, behaved or disciplined. Like he showed so much discipline. Mm-hmm. Like he wouldn't go get it until you like were like, okay, you can have it. Yeah. And and uh, he wanted it though. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Um. Yeah. So his primary. That's because you you were going right. Exactly. So his his primary jobs mm-hmm. were um, explosive detection, and then also like catching bad guys. Yes. Any like um, like search and rescue type stuff, like or so. There's also so like his, his full title is patrol explosive detector dog, so that covers patrol is actually a lot. It's just only one letter in that acronym. Gotcha. But that does a lot. That covers a lot. So patrol is obviously we have biting, but then we can also do what we call scouting in the military, is we can find someone in a building, in a wood line, like you know, you name it. We can try to find someone, mm-hmm. but. He's uh, without you know with training and whatnot. He's gonna think that he's gonna get someone to bite. That's what he's thinking. But we can somewhat do search and rescue. That's not our main role at all. Mm-hmm. But there was um, actually the first. I think before I was even certified with him, we had a vehicle rollover uh, on Fort Hood where I was at, and uh, we called. I mean, every dog team that was, I think, certified got called out to go search for people and they're not there to bite granted they don't know that but it's on the handler to hold them back we can find people absolutely okay. oh, gotcha yeah. say someone goes missing or on the run like we've got there was there was a time where we were looking for a kid that was actually autistic and we're looking for him we're not obviously we're gonna let the dog bite him right but right. we can try to help find this person gotcha so okay so they're not tracking dogs like i know there's some that are sense specific tracking definitely not and they're not actual tracking yeah, can you imagine? They're not oh. going to come in with a nice little barrel around their neck and be like, oh, hey, yeah. here, let's cuddle. Yeah. 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 <laughs> can you imagine, though? Oh, my gosh, thank goodness you guys found me. Ah! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. Um, that'd be bad. Uh, but, you, this is one thing we were talking about. This is a little precast action, but we can go into it now. So, But, like, that's also where the other dogs in the military come into play, I'm guessing. Right. Because... He's got, he can do a lot of things, a dog like Ido, Mm -hmm. but there are other dogs that can do other things. Uh, Well, I'm sure, I'm sure you could train a Belgian male to do anything, Um, but there's other dogs that are trained to do other stuff, right? Like we were even talking about Labradors and- Yeah, you were throwing um, out some some acronyms. Oh, yes. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, right now, well, I guess there's technically three that like are in the kennels where um, there's the PED, the Patrol Explosive Detector Dog, excuse me. Then there's the PDDD, which is Patrol Drug Detector Dog. Mm. And then you have PED-E, which is P-E-D-D-E, which is enhanced. And that's the e-collar, pushing, like, you know, basically your hunting dog that can be pushed out further and still have control of them. Because I can't do that with him. That's We didn't go through that training. I, yeah. Okay. But the Army used to have a another dog um, called an SSD. It's a specialized search dog, I think is what it was for or what the acronym stood for. And uh, the majority of them were Labradors. I mean, there was definitely other dogs, Mm -hmm. but the majority that I was told were Labradors. And that's their purpose was to search ahead a distance that made it safer for the group that you're like leading essentially that say, for whatever reason, the dog set it off. I mean, yeah, it's bad, but at the same time, that's, that's what he's there to do. He's there to find it. I mean, it's it sucks, but it, he's there to find it, and that was the purpose of that was to send him out further to find things before we got close to him. Gotcha, but, Dude, yeah. gotcha. All our dog, I salute those ones. And um, then the Marines have other dogs too. I know there's a uh, combat tracking dogs, and I know they have PEDs and PDDs as well. But yeah. I don't know much about that. When you're describing like you know how that lab is working, it's funny because like from a hunting background, like mm-hmm. you watch like a field lab you know work and like that's i mean they're kind of ranging out there and they've got absolutely we we have different search patterns and it's exactly like hunting honestly um like i was saying we quarter a field if you quarter field for hunting um for a roadway in the like there was a book that came out or whatever like a training book or whatever they called it orbiting i don't know why we just called it zigzag because it looks it's a zigzag you're zigzagging across the road Mm -hmm. but you're always you can do that but you have to change up your search pattern Based on where the wind is blowing. Oh, sure, right. So, I mean, if the wind's blowing at you, sure, zigzag. 
Sure. Um, if the wind's at your back, you're going to want to do like a box method or something. Send him up one side of the road, come over. So when you send him up, you know, he's checking that whole roadside. But when you come over, you're actually checking all this area that you haven't been to yet. Okay. As long oh, as your right. is long enough, and then you come back down to the other side. Yeah. Like, he's getting in front of you to get downwind. Correct. Um, what about males? Oh, so, I keep saying him, right? Males, females? Yes. Males and females, yep. Okay. How is their nose compared to, you know, you always hear about um, other dogs. I, there's, like, the bloodhound, and even retrievers have I, phenomenal yeah, I, noses. I do not know that. Not sure. Yeah. I mean, I, most dogs, I feel like, sniff in a different spectrum than us humans do. Yes. I, I've oh, heard absolutely. that pretty much every dog has got a phenomenal sense of smell. But I've I, heard I'm a curious. theory, too, so. that, say, a hamburger, and this is the way it was explained to me, the dog can smell everything on a hamburger. Like, you smell a hamburger, but the dog right. smells a bun, they smell the cheese, they smell the burger, they smell, like, uh, say, if there was lettuce or tomato on it, they smell all that individually. They can dissect it. Yeah, and I, like, I don't know if that's how it is. No one knows. Yeah. Everyone has a theory. So. Yeah, I've got... And I've it got, would make sense, kind of, because... Explosives, for example. I mean, we there was all these different ingredients that you have in explosives. Mm -hmm. There was a very common ingredient, which I think was potassium chlorate or sodium chlorate. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a bunch of other stuff mixed in with that, but he could smell that one thing. Right. So, Interesting. Yeah. Like he can pick it out. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. it's no different than, like, say, people, you know, like hiding drugs in coffee grounds or something. Dog's still going to sort through yeah. that and find the drugs. Nice try. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've got, I've got that in. Uh, Better Beverly Hills Cop One, really good oh, movie. Yeah, yeah. classic. <laughs> yeah. I've talked about them before. I got these goofy uh, setters. Very much uh, not the dogs I would use as biting dogs or anything. Like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, they'll just be laying out in the grass and then just kind of looking off one way. All of a sudden, the wind blows and they just look the other way and point as if just yep. like it's like the no look pass, except the no look point. <laughs> right. And then it's just kind of like okay, I guess um, something must have. It just it's almost like they're physically hit by the smell yeah it's just the way they react to it at oh and it's the same way with these ones they find, like have that odor of an explosive and it's like there'll be times where it's like man that dog just broke his neck looking this way like one to look so quick is what we would say yeah mm -hmm. and because you'll be walking along and this bam turns and goes for the explosive yeah so yeah, yeah. it's 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 yeah. a physical thing for him us we're like catching a whiff of something they're like bam. exactly <laughs> yeah I mean, we did that little thing in the office earlier as well, and like you just had like this minute, and it's a synthetic thing too. And it was point zero five grams, I think is what it was. I can grab it too because I actually would like to say how much it was. But well, uh, this was he was detecting something earlier. Yeah. Yes, and it was like basically nothing. And he's like, "Oh, I got it." Oh, here we have a bag that says TNT. On it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, really, really cranking up the fun. So yes, and. Let's see here. And on the, the bag right here, it says that the breather bag contains 0 0.05 grams of TNT explosive mixed with another 0.95 grams of inert material. Hmm. So out of 90, like out of, there's only 5% of explosive out of that. Right. Which is like, I mean, and when, when it comes to TNT, I think we were using like quarter pound sticks. Like, yeah. Like quarter mm -hmm. pound versus, you know, 0 0.05 grams. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Which he, uh, is he's more got realistic. MC, he's got MC Ryan over there pegged. You notice that? <laughs> oh, yeah. He knows he's, MC Ryan is the toy guy. Yeah. <laughs> every time he comes like, back, I've got two every toys time here, he comes he's back, like, nope. he's like, there's the guy. <laughs> I, there he is again. I got these old toys. I want those new toys. Yeah. God. But, yeah. And then, here, I, I, I grabbed my phone so you can see that picture that I took. Hey. Uh, a picture of what now? That. Right. Oh, there he is. Yeah, with, right his, with his basically pistol sight ears. Yep. <laughs> that is funny. He is keyed in. Now, do you, like, when you're um, in the service with one of these dogs, you are a dog handler. Mm -hmm. Is he with you all the time? Like, do you go home with him? Like, how, how does that part work? You and the so, dog's relationship. Is it is it strictly work? It is. Yes, it is supposed to be strictly work. Okay. But we do not take them home <laughs> at all. No. Yeah, um, we do not take them home because it's all liability reasons. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's no different than taking a weapon home. Yeah. That is a government like government weapon. You're not gonna take a government weapon home with you off base, especially. But at the same time, if someone gets bit unintentionally, that's a that's a whole situation that you have to deal with now. Oh, Maybe. for sure. So yeah, and like even training wise, or like our compound in the military, it's always away from like the main area of yeah. the base. Just so that, one, we're out of the sight, out of sight, out of mind from the general public. 
and two, that gives us a lot of area to train in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we talked a lot about training, and it's like you can do a lot in training. You know, socialize the dogs to any number of like experiences or things that they can encounter, right? But yes. that's also like infinite. And I was watching some some videos, Jim, and like I mean, like you you mentioned like dogs being on boats, dropping out of planes, going into yeah. helicopters, like yeah, um, like a lot of stuff that the dog has to be comfortable with. Yeah, like, like it took me a long time to get my dog not to be afraid of the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And, right. then like, and then like, oh, hey, now let's go jump out of an airplane. Yeah, that is something I have never done, but there is, and that's a lot to do with like uh, the special forces guys will do that. Okay, gotcha. And that's like, that's some intense stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I when I was on deployment, the team asked me like, uh, you think you can air assault a dog? I was like, I haven't been to air assault school. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't even know how to do that myself. I mean, I've seen it in movies. I'm sure you just like, grab the rope, don't let go and slide down, right? <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I've never done that with a dog. They're like, okay, we probably won't do that then. I was like, yeah, let's not. Yeah. But say, I mean, one of my buddies was on deployment. He hadn't done it either. And he actually got to, I think he got to um, be hoisted up with the dog. Okay. Because okay. we did hoist training. Yeah, like, you know, he's ready to go over there. <laughs> come here, you know. Come on. stuck, man. I mean, he'll probably take the whole table with him. But, um, but uh, we did hoist training. Say, like, uh, we were in a situation. We have a casualty and a uh, helicopter can't land. And I had him with me. He did not like it because from all the backwash of the blades kicking up everything. But we had the training where they send down like a, uh, basically like a stretcher. Okay. Put a casualty on it and they lift him up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, nice. But yeah, there's... Like when he doesn't like something, is it like other dogs when they get like scared of a new thing where they're kind of like, Ooh, and they kind of, you know, cower away? Or, is, or when he doesn't like it, is he kind of like, does he just get amped? You know, um, or like... He definitely doesn't like it. He tries to go away, but that's when I like pull him in. Yeah. And then we might have a conversation that is not in favor of me sometimes where I get bit. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's happened a couple of times. That kind of conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One side conversation from him. So then I'm sitting there trying to calm him down. But um, it that's all training though. That's yeah. why we try to take care of that in uh, when we're not deployed. Um, because we did ride on Blackhawks. And I think, uh, no, I think it was just a Blackhawk uh, back in training. Um and all he does is perfect. He jumps in real quick. I mean, he runs to it because he's like, I don't like this, but I'm going to jump in the helicopter. And he just lays down. Nice. Yep. Chill. Same with planes. Like, say, because uh, we do uh, Secret Service missions as well. And uh, going on a civilian plane, just, I'm like, hey, this is our seat. He goes down, like, he lays down, just goes to sleep. Perfect. But at one time, nice. we did a, uh, we were on a Chinook on deployment. And it's the one where you can see out the back, the ramp's down. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. We took off, and the pilots were great because I didn't even feel us take off. And we, he, next thing, I just feel him tense up. I was like, what's going on? I look out the back, and he can see the lights that were around. We're still in the fob, like, moving. And he's, and I was like, oh, we're up in the air. And he's like, oh, God, we're moving, and I don't like it. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, he just got all tense and would not move. Something is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something's different. Yeah, that was funny. Uh, the life of a dog. I always laugh every time I wake up in the morning and I think to myself, you know, like a dog, or even a regular dog, a house dog, you know, they don't know what you're going to do with them that day. Nope. They wake up every day just, I could get neutered today. <laughs> I could go for a walk today. I could get in a car for eight hours. Today. They don't know. Yeah. It's just, what a life. If only we were able to live that way. I would love it. I hate <laughs> planning. I like not knowing... By and large, that I'm not going to get neutered every day, Jim. <laughs> well, that's fair. Yeah, that's that's one I'd like to. That's yeah, I, I can agree with that. I'd like to know in advance if if at all. Well, just yeah, maybe just it's better not to, to know. Maybe. Just don't. Yeah, not. It'd be we'll great see. if someone is like, if it was going to happen, just knock you out real quick, and, like not even know it's coming. Right. Perfect. Yeah, I don't want to have to like you know like sedation neutering. Worry, <laughs> like think about it before. I don't want to think about it right now. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. But uh, back to that training thing, yeah, that a lot of the, like, you've, you've seen pictures or whatever, people jumping out of planes with dogs. That is not conventional forces doing oh, that. it's not every single dog. No, okay, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. no. Gotcha. No, there's, that's basically like your special forces stuff. Because that's, yeah, I've never jumped out of a plane. I don't really care. don't really want to either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm big on heights. There. I'm with you there. We're covering all of our bugaboos. Neutering, jumping out of planes. Um, 
what's like you know you're talking about like the dog not you know like maybe the dog's apprehensive about doing something at times like what's that and maybe you're getting alluding to that earlier or even spoke to it but like what's the like what's the trust situation like as far as like him trusting you you trusting him and that is as a big part of like the beginning of getting a dog okay we get like when we're assigned a dog we leash him up and walk around for two weeks that's all you do. Like, obviously not two weeks straight. Yeah. But, like, you come into work, and you take him out, and you walk, and you don't give him commands. It's just to get the dog to know that you're the one that's going to take him out. So it's starting to build that trust. Mm-hmm. Like, you feed him. builds that trust even more. It's just that's a lot of it is building that trust up so the dog respects you, knows you, all of that. And a lot of it goes back to training, too. Like, there's, like, you know, situations that you don't experience. So you have to do those in training so that the dog, and you can work out those kinks. Mm-hmm. You go into it, and then you can be like, "No, it's fine. Come here." You're, it's and then after that, you build that trust even more. Mm-hmm. Like, we did a uh, foot march through a river, and um, it's like, I'm I'm just glad he didn't care for the water, but like, if it was the case, because there was another guy that his dog didn't like the water, he jumped in the water first, and it was like, "No, it's okay. Come here." And mm-hmm. the dog like went up the edge, and he's like, "See, it's fine." And then the dog he's just working it out and then training, mm-hmm. and then the next thing you know, the dog's fine to get in the water. Yeah, yeah. So. Take that, and you can apply it about anything. You just have to work it out slowly. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. You don't want to force it, because then that goes back to the bad experience. Right. Right. And they're like, yeah, why would I trust you? I was nervous, and then you just forced me into it. Exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 Now, Which, now, it's, it can be, like, that's the frustrating things with dogs, you know, is is having to have all the patience. Yes, uh, and it's hard not to get frustrated. Yeah. And even these dogs, I'm sure, are usually pretty quick studies, you know. <laughs> Who would you say? <laughs> <laughs> or is there some stuff where they're like, this is going to take a while? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Definitely well. going to take a while on some things. And like, especially if, say, you get a dog that someone had before, that's it. Oh, now you're breaking all the old, the old habits, habits and stuff bad that habits, were built. Yep. Yeah. Say, so, and like, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just, maybe they're not bad habits, but sometimes they different, are. different, different way of doing stuff. Yeah. Well, and then are you, like, let's say you, you get somebody else's dog, is that, is that trust thing? Is that a start from square one sort of thing? Absolutely. Really? And there's a lot of times there was actually, uh, like, they get switched up on dogs. And you can't even be in sight of that dog when the other person's trying to train it. Oh, yeah. Because you're just going to mess still, it up. Exactly. Yeah. The dog's going to focus on you, like the other person that was his handler before. Yeah. Gotcha. So it's, yeah, it's, you have to be aware of that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it takes time. But then it's kind of, it's kind of, you know, sad for the other handler because especially if they had a connection with that dog sure when the dog has more of a connection with the other person now yeah and it's like the dog kind of doesn't care about you anymore but that's all about working though yeah, yeah. So. is there an eventual point that you get to where the dog is now sort of like attached so to speak to the new person that if the old handler walks around the dog's kind of like yeah i remember you but this is my new person now. oh absolutely okay yeah absolutely. just not right away right away Correct. you gotta okay there's that break yeah. in interesting when um when we were going downstairs, like Ito, like wanted, like you're the alpha, <laughs> yeah. right? But like he wants to be in front. Is that a trained thing, or is Correct. that just in it his is. nature? Trained okay. thing, yeah. Um, because whenever we're searching, like I mean, he's not back here. He's not in the back of the group. He's always out front. Mm-hmm. I mean, whether we're looking for a person or looking for explosives, he's up front. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. just how it was, and yeah. Then we train that. It's because that's. And again, they don't know what they're finding, of course. Right. All they're doing is working for that toy or whatever, and which is why he wants this toy so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess that's probably a good thing, though, because if I was like, if I was going to do like a risk reward analysis in my head, <laughs> like yeah. be like, oh, giant bomb. Yeah, I'll stick my nose on that thing. Yeah. Because I want that toy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Make the bomb out to be something fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, I get that. Now, uh, Maybe this will dovetail into the story of why Ido has no teeth. But when you're on deployment with the dog, um, that's another scenario, I'm sure, where the dog's probably not just going to like be hanging out with you the whole time you're there, like sleeping in your room, like all this stuff, right? Like there, there's a place yes. that they go, oh, they are with you pretty so much the whole deployment, time? So deployment can be different. Granted, at like the, the main base I was at, they did have kennels and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But when we went out to the other, like a smaller like fob or camp um there was still kennels but like i mean if you wanted to if i wanted him in there he can okay say like we were taking a 
indirect fire, for example, like we were getting shelled, I could take him in my room so that we were at least together. Yeah. And like, because, and it would have definitely, it'd definitely be better for him too. Cause and then I'm there. He's not just by himself. When he's not a sitting duck and yeah. get a crate. Yeah. I get um, it. Okay. But then when we were out on mission, like say we, I spent a week out in a valley and uh, then yes, he's, he's right there next to me. Sure. And like, like this, I just have him leashed up and then take him on, take him wherever I want. Are you like, are you curtain around a bunch of food in your kit? Or yep. What? Yeah. yeah. Like say we, we plan ahead. Um, Oh we yeah, I always, didn't even think about like have, you got to have extra food and water. Yep, absolutely. We, um, well, depending on the mission, like how long the mission is. Like, okay, well, it's say a day. Well, I'm gonna pack for two or three just in case. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, yeah. You don't want to end up with, with nothing. But um, yeah. does he cart anything around, or is he just no. slick? No, nope, slick. He doesn't. Yeah, you can't weight him down. He's got to no. do stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was, it was funny. They. Uh, You're his pack mule. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Absolutely. But it was funny. There was a. Uh, a couple of the guys on the team, they had uh, made like a Velcro thing. It was like, I think they put four or five um, 40 millimeter grenade launcher rounds in it. And like his harness has Velcro on the back. And they're like, look, we made Ito a, a carrier and put him on his back. <laughs> <laughs> this is a joke. And I was like, oh God, we can't do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Huh. What about, is that, so he's got kind of that, um, I don't even want harness on yes, harness, right now. Yeah. Is that always on him like that? Um, or So... They put him in the mindset, say when we were like uh, stateside, we would put the harness on him when we were looking for explosives. Okay. But when we're looking for like a guy or someone in a building or wherever, we're looking for a person, we just have the leash on or the collar on him. Okay. And it's is that wherever. just so nothing will hang up like if he needs to go or? Yes. Or and just like, to maybe differentiate the two activities? Yes. Okay. It's kind of both. Um, so like wherever we'd clip the leash, he could feel the pressure. Like say on his collar, like around his neck. We put on the flat collar so it's not on the choke chain mm-hmm. um, if we're looking for, you know, a bad guy or trying to find someone. But then when we're trying to find explosives or whatever, we use the harness so that's not around his neck, mm-hmm. but it, it gives him more freedom to move around and whatnot. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Not that we're trying, because like, we are wanting to have, like, somewhat restrain him when we're looking for a person in case they give up. Because if he bites someone, it, whether it's, it's, like, you know, dogs and uh, police force too, civilian side, it's not good. If they bite someone, they're not supposed to. No. Right. So we want to restrain them more. Are people afraid more of guns or dogs? <laughs> Probably dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Generally speaking, would be. Yeah. There, I, mean, I feel like. Well. Maybe because I understand guns more. See, <laughs> there's uh, actually a say um, we were to question someone. I can't even be in the room with him. Do it with a dog. It's actually illegal. Oh yeah, I didn't. Oh. Which it's because like I think it goes back to, I think Guantanamo Bay or something. There was a dog handler there that had the dog in. They brought him in. No, and they brought him in and just had him there for to intimidate the the prisoner oh. or whatever. Oh right. And then that was shut down quick. Got it. Yeah. Got it. I feel at least you know like most of my experiences uh, through television, Jim. So it's very accurate. But like you see, like um, you know, it's like stop. Or I'll shoot, and people are like, oh, I'll keep running. They're like, we'll release the dog. He's like, all right, cool. No, well, actually, yep. uh, yeah. you know, like, never mind then. <laughs> There's been plenty of situations where my dad uh, has had his dog out and it starts barking, like, on a vehicle, and people don't want to get out of the car. And as soon as he pulls the dog out, the dog starts barking. The guy's like, oh, no, I give up. And he starts walking out, and the guy's like, come on, I was getting ready to send the dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when, um, and the dog is like, come on, I was getting ready yeah, to bite. Yeah, exactly. What's it? What's it like when you're when you're in a uh, a group of guys um, on deployment on a mission, whatever it's going to be, and you're the dog guy, and mm-hmm. they're all just regular guys. What's it like for them? You ever running into guys that are like unsure of dogs, like oh, they don't absolutely. know how to feel about it? Like how do how does that work? Absolutely. Um, and I try like I so on deployment, um, I had the dog in with the guys on the team, and it was like, hey, I want him to get used to you guys, so please like. Pet him, say hi to him, because if anything would happen to me, that way they could take care of him. Mm. Like oh, he would sure. know that he would know he would these know that the they're guys. okay. Yeah, these are the good guys. Um, but yes, that's how we would kind of. And there's of always someone or some people that are not sure of dogs. I'm like, look, he's fine. He's not gonna do anything. But at the same time, we talked about it earlier. You need to be confident in what you're doing. If you're afraid, the dog knows that. Mm-hmm, the right. dog absolutely knows when you're afraid or you have just that little unsure 
mm-hmm. feeling about going up to him. Yeah. Well, when I met Ido this morning, like one thing, like I wasn't scared of him, but I, I was actually unsure of like, I guess like protocols, like how, like this is a working dog. He's got a job. Like how much, like, can I praise the dog? Can, can I pet the dog? Can mm-hmm. I, whatever. Does that, like he's retired now, right? Like yes. when I see him, other than when he was latched onto my arm, <laughs> like he's like a, pretty much a regular dog. Like you guys have this awesome relationship. You know, he wants to play. He wants to be petted. Um, is that somewhat different though when he's, you know, essentially like enlisted working? Do you do less of that or is it the same? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, so try not to let anyone pet your dog. Well, actually no one was supposed to pet your dog, period. From what our guidance was from the cow master, and why why is that though? Because you don't want the dog to go out to people and want attention. Oh, okay. You want the dog to treat and look at everyone, at, not necessarily as a threat, but like you're not getting anything from that person. The only person that that dog gets anything from is me. Right. Okay. Like, I have the toy. I have I have everything that he desires on me. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't look at anyone for else for that. Yeah, which gotcha. is a big part of it. Okay, and that makes nice. perfect sense. Yeah. Is there anything that you would ever need to communicate if the dog were going to, like, go out and, uh, well, like, again, I'm thinking on a mission with the other guys and stuff. Uh, is there anything that you need to communicate to everybody else to make sure that they're not accidentally going to end up in the line of fire of a fur missile? <laughs> so, um, yes, and that was, we, we talked about that a lot. Like, we would give, um, hi, I know, um, when I would go, like, deployed or whatever and get linked up with the team, or whoever I was going to be with, we'd always give what was called a commander's brief. And it's like, our what we can do, and we don't really want to say what we can't do, but it was like, hey, this is everything that we can do for you. And then we would go into the details like, hey, we want to send a guy, send him on someone, make sure like we have people behind me and not in front of me. Right. Just in case. Yeah. yeah. Sure. But like there was also the thing too, like we're always told, you want to have someone with you at all times? At least like, you know, it's like your overwatch or whatever. Because I would be looking at my dog. I'm still trying to pay attention to what's going on, but I'm also looking at my dog Yeah. in case he finds an explosive. So that way, this guy is also paying attention to it around me and right. around us. Yeah, I mean, your focus is really taken up. Yes, I mean, granted, yes, I'm still looking, but I'm still paying attention to him more so than my surroundings. Yeah, mm-hmm. More so than somebody mm-hmm. else would be. Exactly. Makes sense. Uh, Jim, you brought it up earlier, but so Ito, like, I mean... I, like I guess me look like he still has teeth. I guess they are <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that's where very, I was hoping we get to. Yeah. Very wore down. Oh yeah. Like what is what is the story by that? Like uh or yeah, what's what's that story? So he kinda would get uh separation anxiety, I think is what it was. And um when he was in his kennel, he would chew on a metal door. It was like a, it was set up as like we could pull on a uh cable and it would open the door up so that it let him go outside into the outside run. Mm-hmm. And when it was closed well, he would kind of get a little anxious and chew on it a little bit. And all these marks oh are gosh. his teeth grinding against metal. Holy. Oh, that's there's uh, Christmas. That's the video or the, <laughs> the picture of him chewing a hole in the metal door. That's like steel. Oh, yeah. No, it is. It's stainless steel. Oh, my gosh. He filed, he filed through stainless steel. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean that. So that goes back to what you were saying about how the the another dog like a shepherd or something like that would be. Uh, oh, there's something up there. I tried a little bit, but I'll just wait yes. till my handler shows up. And whereas the the mal instead is more like I will try until I'm dead. Yes, and this is the this is a Belgian Chevron. That is what. Okay. That's kind of yeah. Oh yeah, you can kind of see like a little bit long longer. Yeah, hair, shaggier hair. Yeah. yeah, but then you kind of still have the ears of a Malinois. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then yeah. It's if you let yourself get sucked in by how cool looking they are, you'll <laughs> you'll wind up uh, like many Americans with a dog that you um, can't handle because uh, that's a cool that's a cool looking dog. Yeah, super cool. Um, very neat. You have Edo now. Oh, yes. That, okay, that's what I was going to start talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so how did so this, how did this occur? So um, whenever a dog gets retired, we actually have to go through um, a video. Like we shoot videos to prove to the dog that he's not going to go by someone on the outside yeah. or that he's more like you know if he's going to bite something he actually is going after that sleeve as you guys saw he cares more about the sleeve he doesn't care to bite anyone right he just wants to play sure because that's playing to him um so we shoot videos like that and then once those videos have been looked at and they've been you know you know they okay him to be retired then it goes down the line of like his most 
previous like his current handler like for me i had the choice and all if i didn't want him it'd go down the line of handlers whoever wanted him okay gotcha and then if no one wanted him then it would kind of go down to like people in the kennels at like at my work in the unit you guys want him no then i think at that point the dog would go to um because the dog program is actually out of lackland air force base in, in san antonio texas okay so i'm thinking the dog would go back there because that's where they do the majority of the adoptions is out of Lackland. They have a lot of dogs. Like anyone can adopt a dog. Anyone can, but it's a little, little difficult because you have to go down there in person. Yeah, you have to go down there in person like a couple of times. See if you're a good fit for that dog. See how you are as a person. See if you're a good fit for that dog, and then, then they'll bring the dog out maybe on the second time or whatever to meet you. Dude, mm-hmm. that's a commitment, man. Yeah, absolutely. Boy, they. But they're great dogs, though. So you ended up with him just because at the end when you were when you were getting out they were kind of like, do you want and basically he's retired. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. Well, I, so my question is like, how do you decide that a dog's retired? A lot of it has to do with their drive. Left? A lot of it has to do with their drive. <laughs> I mean, yes, potentially too that too. Um, but uh, their their drive to work. Okay. I mean, there was a, a, an older female dog that we had that, that we were trying to do detection with, and it was like the whole time like, come on, let's go, let's go, Uh-oh. and it's like. Like grandma, like come on, dragging her along, like trying to find something. Like, okay, no, we're done. Right, and she's just like, she's like, come she's on, just like, I'm old. retirement. Yeah, I'm old. <laughs> I think she was like 13 or something. Oh man, yeah. yeah. Jiminy Christmas. Yeah, the military does things very differently than say the civilian side. Yeah, um, they'll work the dog much longer because they want to get everything that we can out of the dog. Mm-hmm. Um, civilian side, I'm sure they have like a set, like maybe 10, or like whatever. They have a set age. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, that's it, yeah. because. I'm sure on the civilian side, they're looking more so ahead towards medical costs. Mm-hmm. Whereas mm-hmm. the military side is we have a vet clinic at every station or duty station where there's a dog or there was a kennels. The whole vet corps is, was designed for the dogs actually. And then they actually, you know, they'll work on, or, you know, um, you can bring other dogs into like your, if say a soldier has a personal pet, of course they can go there too. Mm. But the whole main role of them is for these guys. Yeah. Well, and I would have to think, and I guess it's speculation, but, you know, we're talking about just the the breadth of, like, training and experience that these dogs have and, like, you know, what they've been socialized to and what they're familiar with. Like, my gosh, like, to do that again <laughs> or to get to that point, like you said, you got to get every, you know, it just makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lot that's going, going in to these dogs. Yeah, yeah, and I didn't realize that, like, my, it was a really big eye opener too, of seeing everything, like what goes into all of it, from the beginning to the end of for these dogs. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of time. How old is Ito? Ten. Ten. What are they feeding dogs like this? Because you got to put good in to get good out, and they're they <laughs> so, are essentially elite athletes. Yes, uh, it's actually the military buy, it buys strictly from. Uh, I don't know if I'm able to brand say brands, but uh, it's um, science diet. Uh huh. And you can buy it. I mean, people can buy it, the the food that we have the dogs on, but we typically feed like there's active, there's light, and then you have ones for like weight control, which light kind of goes into, it's just based on calories and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, then you have, there's all different types of of, like your allergies, like your skin and coat stuff. Oh yeah. But I still keep him on the science diet. I mean, I don't care how much it costs. I think it's like $70 for a 35 pound bag. Yeah. And I have him on like this senior, like just the old man food essentially. <laughs> but I just don't want to change his food up. I mean, he's been on his whole life. He's on science. Well, he he's looks, on science diet looks, silver. Yeah, <laughs> he looks great. Like you would, you guess that, that he's way younger than how he looks. Yeah. I mean, I'd I'd guess four or five. Really? Yeah. I mean, yeah. just looking at. I mean, he's obviously a mature adult <laughs> dog, yeah. but he's definitely not. You know, you see some ten year old dogs, and they look like. I mean, they're they've pretty yeah. much thrown in the towel already, and he <laughs> looks like he's ready to go another couple of rounds. I mean, that is one thing that I've noticed, like huge, like I've versus working dogs, and your typical house pet. They have a strict diet. They have you know they get like supplements. Say like um, we give them uh, like it's uh, your omega three. It's like your official oil. Oh, yeah. I think it's uh, carp. Oh, no, it's, I don't forget what it is. It's another thing too. It's just to help with joints and everything, but they're on that. Like they get that every day. Yeah. And they are on a strict diet, and they have your they get exercise every day, whereas your house pet probably doesn't do that. 
Yeah. I mean, you get a lot of mallet whenever you run around. But unless they're like, say, a hunting dog or you're putting work into it, they're different. I they mean, are, yeah. They're absolutely, and they get they get the exercise, they get the the nutrition they need, and I've seen a difference even from like the my parents' dogs. Um, we have them just as pets. They aren't really hunting dogs. I mean, or by any means, but they just kind of lay around and whatnot. They're they're I mean they're great dogs still, mm-hmm. but very different energy wise. Right. Yeah. Like even uh, even joints. Like they're stiff, like more like, you know, your pets are more stiff at, as they get older. Mm-hmm. In him, I thought he was in pain, like in his back legs or his his uh, back or his hips, I mean, were in pain. So I was giving him some a little bit, like basically like dog ibuprofen. Mm-hmm. And I noticed, I was like, nope, we're going to take you off of that. We want you, I want you to feel a little, a little bit of what you're doing because then he was like 110% like running around like, oh yeah, I was like, the pain is no. gone. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Now I am younger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe, no. maybe the, the, the check engine light or whatever it was that was coming on for him actually wasn't a bad thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slow him down just a little bit. Yeah. But even now, even at home, uh, my dad and I built a uh, training arena for his dog for, and like uh, departments come around from the surrounding counties to train there too. But he loves going in there just to run around. Nice. Just having the time of his life. And retirement, oh, my God. He is, ever since I got him, like, the first day I retired, I was like, this is going to be interesting. I wonder how he's going to do it in my house. And I was still in the military when he was retired. So that's what I was I was going to ask, like, how did that time out? Was it, like, simultaneous? Oh, uh, it was close. It was very close. Uh, okay. Um, I don't know the exact time frame. I just know that I was getting ready to get out, uh-huh. and they, had, they retired him out. Okay. Mm-hmm. And my kennel master's like, here's your retirement, or you're going, getting, or going away gift is him. <laughs> and uh, and I was like, oh, I hope he doesn't tear up anything when I'm gone. Because I was like, I'm going to leave him out just to see how he does. Mm-hmm. I left, went to work came back and he was like racked out on my couch and i opened the door and i was like hey Edo. And he like lifts his head up looks at me and lays it back down I'm like all right guess you're retired just loving retirement <laughs> he's just just soaking it in he's like i'm still high energy yeah but i'll take some of this mm-hmm. and um like i said i was still in at the time at, uh yeah when he was retired and i had my friends over and whatnot and they couldn't believe how much he had changed already like from being in to being retired he knew he was retired real quick and just loves it i used to have a chocolate lab and they would we never socialize these dogs with other dogs oh really no way that's huh no oh interesting no because like alpha them alpha mentality yeah a lot of them think they all they probably another yeah exactly um there's there's been dog fights before and yeah majority of them don't typically get along um, I went on a secret service mission with uh, a buddy of mine from the same base and we going through airports our uh, SOP is that dogs have to be muzzled mm-hmm. at all times going sure. through any public area again liability but um, these those two would shoulder to shoulder walking through the airport didn't mind they were buddies good buds yeah didn't care I was like well this is cool but going back to him being retired he used to have a chocolate lab and oh my god he would play all day with him no I mean, way. He would jump like this chocolate lab was like 80 pounds, like taller. And we really think he was mixed with a Great Dane or something because he was just big. Mm-hmm. But he would jump on his shoulders, like throw up arm up on his shoulder. He'd have his whole mouth around his head. Just playing. Just playing. Never bit hard, nothing. They were just playing. Good I'm stuff. like, this is great. Did you know what he earned it, man? Yeah, absolutely. And that's and a lot of work in. very happy that he has taken retirement as well. And even at work here, I mean, he gets along with everyone too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he just seems like pretty mellow dude. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I wouldn't, like, if you just, like, walked in with him, like, I wouldn't assume his background at all. Yeah, I'll show you a picture, too. Of I him. might, solely because of the type of, like, okay. the breed of dog. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. If you put a blanket over him and I just knew that it was a dog figure running around, <laughs> then I agree. Yeah. Look at him. This is him at, like, at my parents' place. He's just, just laying in bed. This is how he is the majority of the day. It. Oh, I know what I was going to ask. I was going to ask one thing. Um, not a long tail. Correct. He actually, so they oh, call yeah. it. Um, I was always in that. Like, was that a. As well. Did they, did they, do they dock it? or? Well, they don't. Do- they, they try not to do much of anything. But if there's what we call tail tip trauma where the dog, and he did this, he would spin in his kennel. Uh-huh. And the tip of the tail would slap against, like, the concrete wall. Oh. And there's blood everywhere, whatever. Excuse oh. me. And um, sometimes even the dogs break their tail. Oh. You can't 
you can't fix that. It's just not something you're able to do, so they dock the tail. Okay. Um, does it like um do they ever throw their balance off when you first dock their tail? I haven't noticed it. I really have it. I mean, I was I was there. I took a dog to the vet, watched them clip it. I mean, do the surgery to get the tail off, and yeah. dog wakes up. I mean, it's fine. Yeah, I I could see it if it bothered him. Like that could be the reason why, but I never noticed it. I'm sure that like they can get used to it. I oh, mean, absolutely. I, you know, like I grew up with a Welsh corgi, little sausage with no tail and tiny <laughs> little legs, but it was like the fastest, most agile dog ever. But I know when I watch my dogs with long tails run, you can always see when they're gonna like. When they're sprinting and they want to break down and turn, they use yeah. their tail, kind of, you know, just you can, like as yeah. like a counterweight or something. <laughs> they do kind of, yeah. It almost helps them steer. So I wonder if uh, you know you're a dog and you're going to steer and you're like, hey, no, there's no rudder. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I can see that. Well, the speed of that, I mean, I've noticed uh, my Labradors. Whenever we take them to the lake, it's like they're using their tail to go through the water or something. It looks like it's something like yeah. that. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's too funny. Yeah, because otherwise tails are such funny things. Like you don't think anything of it when you see a dog with one. But you're like, why do you have that? Well, they they talk with it too, though. Like, hey, I'm happy. That's I'm, fair. Yeah. you know, they tuck their tail, their head up, tail wagging. Like, oh, absolutely. It, you it's, know, it's like, and that like it goes back to a lot of things I was saying before. But body language from us is huge to them. Yeah, okay. no different than a body language that you can say you that like the dog's wagging his tail. Body language from a dog, we can tell, and they can tell so much more in detail of how our body language is and how we feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, and we I was always told, and I I, I really do think it's true our feelings run down the leash and the dog can feel it. Mm-hmm. Even standing next oh, to the dog, yeah. mm-hmm. just standing next to them, they can f- they can sense it and feel it. I say you had, like I was at work and something was going on at home, they can feel that I was off that day. Yeah. And it can throw your whole day off for training. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, then like what about like in a real scenario too? Can oh, they, absolutely. You know, like I'm sure like if you're on like on edge, they're on edge. alert. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Is that good though? Do they do they read off yeah. that like okay cool it's serious now like we need to like I think I think it is I think it is good because then they're like not like cuz I mean all we do like we train every day when we're in the military but then when it comes to real real world situation I think they know and I think it's good yeah but we do train we try to make training realistic so that we have that feeling of that it's real sometimes okay yeah. gotcha. so it's trying to make it real for them but at the same time you're never going to actually simulate real world stuff Right. So I think I, I do think it's good though that they can sense it. Yeah. Well we th- we threw out some acronyms of some of the other dogs, but uh Ito is a MWD. So like um, all are they all they're all MWDs. Because yeah, they're military working dogs. Okay, so that's a classification for all the different Yeah, kinds. So a dog in the military is an M W D and then it branches down. They can be like a the PED or the PED E or the the PDD or an SSD or whatever it is that they okay. are. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So that's like the umbrella. Correct. Well, I don't know. But looking at him and seeing what his job is, I think it's actually appropriate that that's very close to the acronym of uh, WMD. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Not the same. Set him loose in a room of bad guys. <laughs> Mass but, destruction. But not too <laughs> dissimilar at yeah. the same time. Yeah. But no, that was awesome. I appreciate yeah. it. Did we uh, did we miss anything? Any other questions from you, Jim, or no, any other cool military working dog things that people who are into dogs should know? Uh, just to say, tell people not to get a Malinois is all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Yeah, I mean, he is older, and I've been with him for a long time, but I would not recommend someone get a puppy and try to raise them up. Yeah. They're yeah. a handful, especially if you don't have time for it. They are a handful. Yeah. Or if you really want to. Join the military, become a dog handler. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There's always that too. There's always that. Which I'm sounds like a really. Like, uh, I don't know, man. It sounds like a really cool. I mean, you were obviously drawn to it. I'm oh, looking absolutely. forward to like the next movie being like Top Gun, but instead of F-18s and F-14s, it's Belgian Mouse. Yeah, it'll, it'll be. <laughs> There's uh, so many movies too that are out there, and like the dog handlers are like. Especially like myself and other ones were like, "Oh my god, no!" Is it just it's just cringeworthy? Oh yeah, there is some like there was a movie out there. I won't. I'm not gonna name what it was, but I talked to. She was actually in the beginning of it, being interviewed, and it was in the movie. And I talked to her, and she she told me afterwards like, "No, this didn't happen. This is not how it was." Like, I was like, "Oh, okay." Dang. And a lot of people believe this is what happened when it didn't. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Number right. one, Jim. We'll call the movie. It'll be Top Dog. I think that's just you know easy. Um. <laughs> But and then maybe we should follow this like with what uh, like real dog handler watches dog handling movie video. Yeah. Oh God, it's the reactions <laughs> to it. <laughs> yeah. I like that. <laughs> I will say like the uh, 
oh, I forget what it was called. Was it just Dog? I mean, it was the one that just came out. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, I did see something like this. It, there is one that just came out. Yeah. It, it was wasn't. Like on Amazon or no, something. No, I didn't, I didn't see that. That's what I, I, I rented yeah. it on Amazon, too. And it wasn't too bad, I will say. I mean, moderately acceptable. Yeah, moderately acceptable, yeah. <laughs> but, but it was cool because I think... I think it was Channing Tatum who was in it. Yeah. Yeah, was that right? It was it was him, or I was in one of the Hemsworth guys, or something like that. So, yeah, yeah, but he went to act like to some of the, like the military bases, like not like today, like in the states. Yeah, and it was like talk to some of the handlers and whatnot. And well, they did at least some stuff. He, they put a little due diligence. In yeah, that's good. at the same time, I mean, some of those other movies though, yeah. the handlers were in it, and well, it's Hollywood. They always yeah, exactly have to yeah. Hollywood yeah. things yeah. up, yeah. and the the real story can be boring to some people. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem. Everybody wants action. They want drama. Yeah, that sells. That sells for um, and we we may have mentioned this, but for a person who is maybe looking to get in the military, military and like I want to do what you did. What was what was like your official title job? Uh, military working dog handler. Okay, and like the the so like regular MPs uh, are thirty one Bravos, and we were thirty one kilos. Okay, um, this is how it was, but it is difficult to get in. Not that I had any. Not that my experience at all, I didn't, you know, flag that around as I was enlisting for that. That didn't matter. Mm -hmm. It does not matter at all if you're experienced in it. Um, It was just by chance that I got it. It really was. If it's available, it's available. If not, well, don't enlist at the time. (laughs) (laughs) Wait till it's available, I guess. I mean, that's really all it comes to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, it depends on how badly you want a specific job. Right on. Garrett, appreciate the time, man. Yeah, Yeah, super fun. Thanks for having me. Edo, so, thanks for being yes. patient with us. He Edo. finally calmed out at the end. <laughs> well, eh, it is what it is. He's still locked on to something. It's not is my arm. not? <laughs> it's not my arm, so whatever it is, I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> but sweet. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening. And uh, like I said, Garrett, thank you. Jim, good to see you. And uh, if you have any nice questions you, or thoughts on uh, military working dogs or other stuff, hit us in the comments. If hit you like this, let us know. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye. There you have it, folks. Thank you very much for listening. As usual, give this video a like if you liked it. Comment something below and give us a subscribe to the Vortex Nation podcast channel. It would mean a lot to us. Also, why don't you give us a follow over on Instagram while you're at it, at Vortex Nation Podcast. We'd love to hear from you over there, and we'll keep you updated with all kinds of cool photos and videos from our adventures that we do here. Otherwise, we will see you on the next one. Thank you again. Happy hunting and shooting, everybody. Have a good one.